Alright guys, so here we are then in Silverstone for I think round 13 of season 2 of the SRL F1 Championship and um, yeah, if you have missed the qualifying video, we are starting from pole position in this race by a stunning 2.1 seconds um, clear to P2 which is Francis McGinn and uh, as you can see there, there is a bit of, um, of rain predicted for this race which will probably come um, towards the end considering the race is starting in dry conditions and um, yeah, like I said before in the last video, Silverstone is my all-time favorite track on the F1 calendar. So I'm really looking forward to this race. And uh, hopefully we can repeat the same as we did in Monaco, which is starting from pole position, getting the fastest lap and winning the race. So um, yeah, we will find out in 13 laps time if we will be able to do it. Here we go, the five lights are going on now. We are waiting for the five lights to go out and they are out now, so away we go for the Silverstone Grand Prix getting a pretty decent start there there are a few cars up my inside Francis McGinn and Sandra Dulis there I have to leave space here on the inside of turn one which I do and uh, we maintain the lead now after the first two corners and there seems to, to have been a little bit of an uh, of a collision behind me but Francis McGinn and Sandra Dulis are still maintaining their qualifying position in second and third place respectively. So putting the engine up into race mix again. Now back into standard mix two as we uh, open up the first sector of this lap. And uh, the gap to Francis is already 1.3 seconds. So um, if we can just break out of the DRS one second window before lap three, then that would be very good. Um, because otherwise Francis might be able to stay with us and uh, keep in the slipstream and more importantly the DRS and uh, we will obviously be trying to pull away from the rest of the field to secure this race win going through Cobb's corner there for the first time I didn't have the confidence to take it flat out like I would do in qualifying because I didn't really know how the car would react on heavy fuel um, because of course we have 13 laps of fuel in the car so now coming to the end of lap one breaking just after the 100 meter board um, into club I think it is as we have a bit of oversight there on the exit of the final chicane as we open up lap two of this race so one lap down 12 more remaining and the gap to France is already 1.8 seconds so it looks like we are currently the fastest person on track at the moment we are uh, continuing our form we had in qualifying which by the way if you haven't seen it already I recommend you do check out that video because it was a really good qualifying session and uh, a very good lap I managed to pull off um, in the closing minutes of the session so yeah back to this race now coming into the first sector of lap two uh, let's see what the gap to Francis is have we managed to increase it yes we have the gap is now 3.1 seconds so it looks like we are over a second a lap faster than anyone in this field um, so far as we have a bit of oversight there on the exit of Love Field now coming into Cobb's corner in the middle sector putting the engine down into standard mix one here we go into cops flat out this time i do have the confidence now on lap two i uh, realized on the first lap that i could have taken it flat out and I, that i was able to carry more speed now through the corners here we go in maggots bags and chap one absolutely beautiful section this is probably my favorite um section on the entire calendar and um the gap now to francis is let's wait until it updates uh, now it is 5 seconds if I see it correctly, yeah 5.0, sorry, so um, yeah we are very very quick on the early phase of this race on the option tyres, uh, remember that the rest of the field is on option tyres as well, or at least Francis is, I'm not sure about Alex Benacetti now up into P3, but I know that Francis is on, is on option tyres as well. So um, yeah, opening up lap 3 of this race now, we do a 134.4, which is identical to the lap we did in the first run on our qualifying session, but um, yeah, later on in qualifying, I managed to do a 32.9, I think. So um, uh, yeah, that was in the end the fastest lap. Never mind, I think in qualifying, I started out with a 33.4, which is um, about a second quicker than the time we are doing now, which is understandable because in the race you of course uh, don't have DRS and more importantly you have much higher fuel load than in qualifying. A bit of offset there again out of love field but uh, luckily managed to keep it under control there as we now come up to Cobb's corner again 
also one of my favorite corners on this track uh, along with maggots baggots and chapel like i explained before look at that it just feels so rewarding to take that corner flat out in seventh gear but this is my favorite section maggots baggots chapel going down one gear and now going down two gears and just hitting the apex beautifully getting on the power as early as you can it just feels so rewarding and so nice to to fly through there and uh, yeah, when you're in the flow with Silverstone, nothing can stop you really. And that's why I absolutely love this track. Um, 4.8 seconds now to Francis on lap 3 already. So we are setting an absolute blistering pace so far in this race. And uh, we are looking very good already to take the victory. But of course, it's very early to say that because it is only lap 3 or 13. So still 10 laps to go in this race as we open up lap 4 now. Um, so now it is 10 laps to go actually. And uh, yeah, skipping a little bit ahead in this race now, we are now uh, coming into the first sector of lap 4 again. Again, let's look at the gap to Francis McGinn um, on the right there in the sector times. It hasn't updated yet, so it's now 7.4 seconds. So we are really pulling away from the rest of the field and uh, you don't need to celebrate too early. But let's be honest there, it's looking good to um, get our second win in a row. Um, and also my second win ever, to be honest, because the first victory I had was in Monaco. So, um, yeah, it looks like there's been a little bit of a turning point in the championship. Now, again, flying through Megas, Vegas and Chapel. Um, I just can't stress enough how much I love that section and how much I love this track as well. So, um, yeah, driving really consistently as well. As you can see on the right, we are uh, three one hundredths of a second uh, down on our last lap, which is uh, a very minimal amount, you could say. Breaking after the 100 meter board again back into second gear for this final section of the track. Bit of oversteer again. It's pretty much standard for me there to have oversteer. I always have oversteer out of that corner. It's just the nature of my driving style, I guess. I have a bit of the same with um, the exit of Love Field. It's just... Um, yeah in my muscle memory or something to just i feel like that's the quickest way because usually of course you don't want to slide around you don't want to oversee the car but i feel like in this case you lose even more time bogging down trying to be smooth with the throttle instead of just dealing with the overseer on the exit so um yeah now again on lap five coming through maggots baggage and chapel once again uh going out a little bit too wide there that cost us a bit of time had a bit of Kind of too much understeer, which resulted in too much oversteer on the exit as well. Um, lap 5 now, so the tires are starting to wear out a little bit. Um, it doesn't affect me too much, I don't think. But um, also an interesting thing to note is that there is still, of course, a, uh, a chance of rain for this race. And I was actually feeling very unsure what to do here. I was really scared and I, I was just not very confident, despite having a, a really big lead. I didn't know what to do with the strategy because it is now lap 6, this is our recommended strategy to come in or our scheduled strategy rather and uh, the gap now is 9.4 seconds to Francis so we've pulled out almost 10 seconds in 5 laps time pretty much so um, yeah our pace is looking really good, that's not the matter, the matter is the strategy, what is gonna happen with the weather, when is the rain gonna fall down. Am I gonna gamble it on options? I can go in for options and be even faster on the second stint and then pit for intermediates towards the end of the race or I could play it safe, pit in now for prime tires and wait for the moment to present itself or I even could stay out on my first stint waiting for the rain to come down and then go to intermediates straight away and I, I didn't know what the rest was gonna do as well so it was a very stressful period of the race despite being in a comfortable lead. But in the end, I eventually decided to come in, as you can see here, and stick with the recommended strategy. I just didn't want to take any risks in this race. I don't want to give away this lead. I don't want to risk uh, making a bold strategy. I just want to stick to what the team suggests me and wait for the rain to come down and just be on the right tire at the right time. And Francis followed me in. I heard him talking over the radio saying that he was gonna do whatever I was gonna do. However, he is on a different compound though. He is gambling it on another set of option tires. So he is counting on the rain to come down near the end of the race because if the rain won't come down towards the end, then he is in, in trouble because he has to make another pit stop then for another set of uh, prime tires then. So then he would have to do a two stop in dry conditions, which is absolutely not necessarily. But of course, due to the, the tire regulations, you have to use both dry compounds in a dry race. So Francis is taking a risk here. Um, but of course, he has 
he doesn't have much to lose because he is behind me and he of course wants to close the gap to me and the only chance um, he has to do it is to be on the faster compound because I I showed I showed him in the first stint that I was quicker on the same compound so um, now I need to watch out a little bit for Francis because he is now on the softer compound of tires he is on the mediums I'm on the hard tire I didn't dare to take the risk uh, but that means that Francis might be closing in on this stint or at least it would be more difficult for us to stay in front or even pull away from him uh, on lap 7 of this race as we put the engine now up into Rich Mix for the hangar straight um, still maintaining the lead despite making a pit stop um, Dion Stahl, our compatriot, the other Dutchman in this league is now up into second place but um, I'm pretty sure he hasn't made his pit stop yet for his second stint as we uh, run a bit wide there uh, on the exit of I think it's Stowe, not too sure about that but uh, that was pretty much the first mistake we made all race uh, running a bit deep there into the chicane as well so that probably cost us a few tenths but it doesn't really matter that much um, it does show that being the first mistake we are um, pretty much uh, on, the edge, on the edge here on this race and uh, driving very consistently uh, the gap to Dion was about five seconds but he is now pulled off into the pits so Francis again is behind me with Alex Benicetti in third the order is pretty much the same um, as in the first and at least for the top three that is and uh, yeah on lap eight of this race now um, still I was very unsure I was so scared to make the wrong strategy call or or do something stupid with the rain and you know the, the finish is coming closer and closer only uh, six laps to go now from this point onwards well pretty much five and a half and uh, still in the lead of this race of course and I just didn't want to throw it away so um, coming through Maggots, Baggage and Chapel again now I uh, haven't been paying attention to the gap to Francis so I'm not sure if he has been closing in on me um, or if we have been pulling away from him I wouldn't be surprised if Francis would be closer to us now because like I said he is on the faster compound of tires however it will wear out a little bit quicker too again running wide there on the exit of Stowe our second mistake of this race now it's not really detrimental I mean it's only a small mistake but it does show that I'm just losing a little bit of concentration here uh, but again I, I forgot to look at the sector time on the right so or on the left rather so I still don't know what the gap is anyway we'll probably see it um, after the second sector intermediate as we come over the hangar straight now once again on the exit of Chapel um, already on lap 9 of this race so the finish is getting closer and closer like I said let's look at the gap on the left to Francis McGinn as we now come through Stoke Corner in 5th gear this time taking it very well there the gap is 10 seconds so still we've managed to pull away a little bit despite being on the prime tires uh, versus the option tires of Francis I'm not sure what tires Alex is on I think he might have started on primes and went with options for the second stint so he is also in a chance to maybe get p2 in his race or maybe even p1 we, we don't know what we're gonna do yet so on lap 10 of this race I think there are a few raindrops starting to fall down the track is pretty much dry still um, so it doesn't really affect the grip in the slick tires but if you look at the sky it kind of looks pretty dark and I think you can see a few raindrops up on screen right now so um, of course it's nowhere near the time to come in for a set of inters but um, the track conditions are um, starting to get a little bit worse and I think the track temperature as well is starting to cool down a little bit we need to pay attention to the tire status there on the right to see um, what is happening with the tire temperatures as well five tenths slower than the last lap so is that because of a mistake or is it because of the track conditions I honestly don't know but it seems like the conditions are still fine still 10 seconds to Francis though Alex is right at the back of him though only six cents behind so it looks like um, there's a pretty big battle there going on for P2 in this race as we now open up lap 11 of 13 now only three laps to go from this point onwards what is gonna happen with the strategy is it going to rain hard enough towards the end to come in for a set of wet tires or intermediate tires or is the rain going to stay out and is it going to take too long for the track to get wet should we gamble it on on option tires to, or on slick tires to go to the end of the race or should we come in it's really hard to make a strategy i was talking to the rest of the guys during this race some guys for example samuel said that he will gamble it he has nothing to lose he's going to go to the end on dry tires I really didn't know what I had to do. I was afraid if I would come in for inters now, 
it might I would lose a bit sub so I would lose the lead anyway and you know you don't really know the track could still be not wet enough for intermediate tires and then you're in absolute trouble because you have lost the pit stop and your tires will be starting to overheat lo lose grip and everything it will just be an absolute nightmare and look at that I don't have the confidence anymore to take cops flat out there I had to shift down to six gear and lift off the throttle in order to still make the corner so the grip is fading away away you can see it in my driving here that I'm just I can't really carry this corner speed anymore that I was doing at the beginning of the race so the track conditions are definitely worsening and I definitely need to be you know more careful through the corners but what are we gonna do two two laps to go pretty much should I come in for inters should I stay out what is the race gonna do I think I'm gonna go for inters here yes I'm gonna come into the pits engine down into lead next as we almost left someone there he's gonna stay out I wasn't sure who it was but we're gonna go for intermediates the track is just getting a bit too wet for the slick tires you can see the raindrops there on screen but the question now is is this the right call is the track wet enough for intermediate tires or is it maybe too wet for intermediate tires? Because I heard some guys, like for example Andrew Hef, he was gambling it on a set of wet. He's gonna go to the full wet tires straight away. He is um, anticipating the rain to come down heavier, and uh, he is gambling it on a set of wet tires. We rejoin the track in P2. Alex Benachetti has decided to stay out. Have we made the wrong call here? We have lost the lead now. Alex is still in front on the dry tires. He has quite a big gap to us because, of course, he wasn't that far behind before I made my stop. About 10 seconds. So he's about 10 seconds in front of me now because you lose about 20 seconds with a pit stop, I believe. So um, Alex Benachetti has taken over the lead of this race. Uh, for the first time, we have lost the lead of this race. Um, so, yeah, on lap 12 of 13, only one and a half laps to go. I'm not sure. If we, it looks like the grip is very good though. It looks like the intermediate tires are working and I believe Alex is really struggling. You can see him there. That is Alex Benachetti. He has made a big, big mistake here. He has stayed out on the, on the option tires, I think, or at least on slick tires. I, I couldn't see if it were primes and options, but it doesn't matter. He is absolutely struggling on a wet surface with slick tires so Alex has definitely made the wrong call here we are absolutely perfect for grip as you can see they're flying through Stoke Corner very much um, you know hitting the apexes here into the final chicane as well as you now open up the final lap of this race and suddenly the stress has dropped a bit because I know the race win is pretty much in the bag now we are pretty much in the box seat to take this win here we have a 13.7 second gap to Francis McGinn. The intermediate tires are working per perfectly here. The track isn't too dry, isn't too wet for the intermediates. As you can see here, Andrew Hef in front of us, he is actually getting lapped. He gambled on the wet tires, like I said before, but the wet tires are clearly not working in these conditions. Despite it looking very wet, the intermediate tires are still the way to go in this race and uh, it doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, it's the final lap, the final few quarters. We have a 13 second lead. Nothing can take this win away from us now, just having a bit of a side there on the exit of Stoke Corner, engine into standard, well that doesn't really matter, 14 seconds now to Francis, it doesn't matter as well, we have won this race, we're gonna win our second race win in succession, starting from pole position, having the fastest lap as well, and there we go, that's our second race win in SRA. So there we go, what a race. It may not have been the most exciting race to watch, but uh, yeah, for me it definitely wasn't a very easy or very boring race. It was definitely very interesting with the strategy, really trying to pay attention to what the other guys were doing and uh, it may have looked like it may have looked easy, but it definitely wasn't. But uh, that's pretty much been it for this video. If you are still watching, then I I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for watching. If you are still um, sticking with me even after 20 minutes, but uh, yeah, if you are if you're still watching, let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, really thankful for that. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Of course, then I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.